Denial about overeating. It's a lot more common than you might think. And on the British Weight Loss Show Secret Eaters, we see it all the time. I don't think I eat enough. I don't think I eat the amount that my body is showing. I eat salads and soup at lunchtime, so I do think that my diet is pretty good. And today's subject, a 22-year-old mother named Katie, is definitely one of the more in-denial contestants on the show. I don't think that what I've eaten, say, in the last seven days warrants so much weight. So I'm just trying to work out where you're going wrong. I mean, what do you think it is? I don't think I drink enough. I've already covered a bunch of secret eaters on this channel, but you guys like the show, I like the show, and I know you're gonna like this episode. I can't believe I haven't made a video on this episode before because Katie is particularly in the dark about her eating behavior. I don't think I eat that bad, I don't. That's a lot of mayonnaise she's had. And I've been there personally, I am all too familiar with denial. But I love secret eaters because it proves that when it comes to weight gain, it nearly always comes down to what you're putting in your mouth, which is a very good thing because that means that we can change it, except we can't make changes if we're lying to ourselves, if we're in denial about how much we really eat. But before we get into Katie's story, a quick message from today's sponsor. So earlier this year, I announced How to Change, a course designed to help you break free from destructive patterns and finally take control of your behavior. But it's taken me a lot longer than I expected to put it all together. This is by far the biggest project I've ever worked on. The course is designed to do more than just show you how to break bad habits. It's built to empower you with the evidence-based skill of changing your life. The curriculum includes two hours of focused video lessons and guided exercises. Plus, you'll get a printable, reusable workbook to track your progress. You'll also become a part of the How to Change community full of others on the same journey as you. Share your wins, tackle your setbacks, and get real-time advice from me and others who understand what you're going through. If you're ready to stop feeling stuck and start making lasting changes, click the link below to join the waitlist. You'll be notified the moment enrollment opens and you'll be one step closer to the freedom of real behavioral change. Thank you for your interest and support. I can't wait to help you on your journey. Now back to the video. So if you've never seen Secret Eaters, here's how it works. They set up hidden cameras all over the house and put the contestants under 24 seven surveillance to see exactly what they're really eating. The goal of the show is to prove to people that their weight gain is really no mystery and that they are in fact, secret eaters. And in this episode, we meet Katie and Michael. At just 22 and 24 years old, these young parents are already obese and rapidly gaining weight. In fact, in the last four years, they've put on a massive eight stone between them, but have no idea why. I feel like Katie and Michael are a good representation of just average people who never had to think much about their weight or food growing up. And now that they're older and they have no information about what is or isn't healthy, they're putting on weight and they have no idea why. As you can see in our fridge, we've got no chocolates or anything bad that you typically see in an overweight person's fridge and understand why we are the size we are. I don't think I'd do anything different to other people. They both think that they don't eat a lot and they think that when they do eat, it's pretty healthy. So they're both really confused as to why over the years, their weight seems to be picking up speed. So when the host, Anna Richardson, shows up and asks them what their diet looks like. Take me through what you would eat during a typical day. Michael claims that he doesn't get a chance to eat much during the day. He works at the train station and he's on his feet all day and he'll usually stop to have one sandwich and then that will hold him over until dinner. Katie also claims she doesn't eat much during the day. She's a stay-at-home mother who's busy with her daughter and says that she doesn't stop and eat a meal until Michael gets home and they all eat dinner together. So I'm just trying to work out where you're going wrong. I mean, what do you think it is? I don't think I drink enough. I can probably go one or two days with maybe just a glass of water. So Katie's chalking her weight gain up to not drinking enough water. That's a red flag. That's a red flag. <laughs> I don't think I drink enough. I can probably go one or two days with maybe just a glass of water. Do you think that if you had more water, then it, it would it would help you to lose the weight? I think it would have more of an impact. But Katie thinks that that's the only thing I could be because she also never eats breakfast. I don't think I've had regular breakfast since I started secondary school. And now I've got to get up, I've got to sort Isabel out, I've got to get her to nursery and I don't eat. Then she's also so busy cooking for her daughter during lunchtime that all she has is a little bit of cucumber that she cuts up while cooking. While I'm kind of making like, I'll cut an 
extra bit of cucumber for me to eat. But so far, Katie, you're saying I don't eat any breakfast and then I'm cooking my daughter's lunch and I'll pick off a little bit of extra cucumber. Yeah. Then for dinner time, the one main meal that her and her husband have every day, Katie claims that she prioritizes cooking vegetables over everything and anything else. I love pasta salads. Even like my carbonara is just full of vegetables, like mushrooms, onions, peppers. So to recap, when asked what she eats in general and in life, the only things Katie can remember eating are cucumber, pasta salad, emphasis on the salad, and then brought up making a carbonara, which is a type of pasta made with, I think, cream, egg, and cheese, but also emphasized that it was full of vegetables. So essentially, when asked, the only things Katie can remember eating are vegetables. You, or ham, you're not eating anything. Like no. I'm gonna go ahead and give Katie the benefit of the doubt and assume that the show cut out a lot of their conversation in order to make it more dramatic. Cause there's no way that someone seriously thinks that they never eat breakfast, they never eat lunch, the only thing they eat is vegetables and yet they're rapidly gaining weight. Now I did some research for this video and I found something kind of interesting. Studies show that most people underestimate how much they eat in a day. Studies have shown over and over again that humans are terrible at estimating how much they consume even when they're trying to track their food intake. But you've probably already heard that one before, not that interesting. But what I hadn't heard before was that not only do we do that, but also that healthy foods such as fruit and vegetables tend to be overreported, while unhealthy foods tend to be underreported. So people literally think they eat more fruits and vegetables and healthy stuff than they do, and they literally think that they eat less unhealthy stuff than they do. People literally omit them from surveys. So what this means is that for whatever reason, humans tend to be biased toward thinking that they eat healthy even when they don't. Even when that is very much so not true. Some of us more than others. But there's also definitely a class of people who are just like full blown in denial about what they're eating. They've put it out of their minds and they rationalize themselves that they're just not eating too much. In general, well beyond food, we tend to have a selective memory that allows us to view our behavior in the most positive light. We tend to forget quote unquote bad behavior, behavior that we maybe don't wanna fess up to, such as maybe how much we overeat. And then we hone in on quote unquote good behavior, such as the vegetables in our carbonara, all as a means of viewing ourselves positively. And obviously I'm not just talking about food behavior here. I'm just using it as an example. This is a video about food behavior. While researching this, I also found another kind of funny study or piece of information that proves my point. Several official surveys suggest the amount of food people eat and buy has gone down in recent decades, while obesity rates continue to rise. But the researchers from the Behavioral Insights team say if the calorie counts in these surveys were correct, the population would be losing weight overall. In other words, nearly everyone surveyed in the entire population of Britain lied a little bit about what they eat and everyone is a little bit in denial. <laughs> So after Katie and Michael have been weighed in and the hidden cameras are installed, quick side note, this has to be the least hidden, most unsecret camera of all time. It is literally eye level on the fridge, which is a problem in of itself. You can't expect people's behavior not to change when they have a camera, like staring them in the eye. We need you to eat absolutely normally for the next week. Promise? Promise. Imagine every single time you went to open the fridge, that thing was staring you in the face. There's no way you're not gonna change your behavior. Like, come on. After the hidden cameras are installed and the secret investigators are in place, the secret eaters team tracked Katie and discovered that she was a lot more in denial than anyone could have ever imagined. First, it's breakfast time. Katie's claim was that she hadn't regularly eaten breakfast since she was like 16 or something like that. I don't think I've had regular breakfast since I started secondary school. I don't eat. Let's find out. <laughs> have a look at this. But it really didn't take the investigators long to figure out that she was actually snacking on her daughter's breakfast. Now it's not like a few scoops of pudding are gonna make or break you, but it's extremely common for people to do that during the day and then have no recollection of it and have no idea how much that might be adding up to in their lives. And you can't really change a behavior until you improve your awareness of that behavior. And in Katie's case, she had no idea that this even counted, right? Like she had no idea that this really counted as calories or breakfast, which is why one of the most universally recommended steps to changing your eating behavior is to start a food journal. And this is true for any behavior you might want to change. Start really paying attention to any habit that you want to change, including tracking and journaling. You'll likely immediately notice things about it you didn't notice before. And this can give you extremely useful info on your quest to change it. Next, as you'll recall, Katie claimed she also didn't eat lunch. Got an extra bit of cucumber for me to eat. But on day one of surveillance, they caught her going out to lunch with a friend. But at least it's a healthy jacket potato on the menu. Spectacular. 
Also, we need to stop right here because they went to a jacket potato shop for lunch. Literally every single episode of the show, the people eat these jacket potatoes. It is pretty cool to see that they have full on like fast food joints dedicated to these potatoes. Most British thing I've ever seen, it's a potato split down the middle, sometimes with cheese and what looks to be a can of Heinz baked beans dumped on top of it. Every single episode that people eat this. I actually can't believe how common this is in British culture. I mentioned something about this in one of my previous Secret Eaters videos, that if you had a show like this, Focus on Canadians, I don't believe we have any food item that we eat with any sort of consistency like across the culture at all. You guys were like, what about maple syrup? <laughs> What about poutine? What about pea male bacon? But I don't know any Canadian who eats any of those foods like regularly, maybe pea male bacon, I guess. I've probably eaten five poutines in my entire life. We don't have food culture like the British. If you're Canadian, what's our jack of potato? Seriously, what is it? Tim Hortons? That's my best guess. <laughs> in all countries, can you guys comment below, what is your jacket potato? I'm actually so interested to see. And if you're someone in that country and you see someone already commented, can you just like it? And <laughs> then it'll go up to the top, it's too much. Anyway, back to Katie. Not only did they catch her eating lunch once, but she went out for lunch every single day during the observation period. <laughs> One day she went out and had chicken wings and a huge plate of, I, I can't really tell what it is. That's same day, she went and picked up a six pack of donuts. And another day, she's found out eating a 2100 calorie lunch, including 800 calories of mayo. More to come on the mayo later, and you might know where I'm going with this. I did have a tablespoon of salad, but I didn't have half that jar. So yeah, after saying that she never eats lunch, she just cuts herself a bit of cucumber. I'll cut an extra bit of cucumber for me to eat. Katie went out for lunch every single day. At least four days that we were following you, you were out eating lunch. If Katie was lying, I feel like she would be smart enough to know not to go out and eat five days out of five in front of the camera. In fact, in making this video, I watched a few other episodes and there are instances of people blatantly changing their behavior and trying to hide what they're eating because of the camera. One person on the show was caught throwing out half of their food and then saying something to the effect of, I can't eat this right now, I'm being monitored. So I feel like Katie probably isn't lying and is probably genuinely unaware and in denial of the extent of her eating habits. And yeah, this is a pretty extreme situation considering the fact that she claimed that she might be gaining weight due to not drinking enough water. But there's no diluting the fact that Katie just enjoys her food. Which is pretty wild given the fact that she went out for lunch every single day while on the show. Like I mentioned earlier, most people tend to over-report the healthy stuff and under-report the unhealthy stuff. People literally claim to be eating way more fruits and vegetables when they are, and then when scientists test their, I think it's their urine that they test for their macronutrient composition, they find that that's just not possible. But denial of quote unquote bad behavior is so common. And by bad, I really just mean any behavior that we think is not really a good look because we like to view ourselves in this positive light as mentioned earlier, and our brain will actually take steps to make sure that's possible. Denial is considered to be a defense mechanism. Our brain pulls out our defense mechanisms when it thinks it needs to protect us from scary information, which is why it's so important to be on your own side when it comes to changing your behavior. Being less critical and more objective of your own behavior allows you to be more honest with yourself, which makes it less likely that you'll be in denial about anything. But Katie's issues aren't just limited to restaurants. Oversized portions seem to be a constant problem for Katie. Katie's just arrived at her brother's for dinner. The show follows Katie to her brother's house and finds her eating a very large plate of spaghetti. Pasta used to be my thing. And when I would eat pasta, I would eat amounts that look very, very similar to that. It actually kind of like took me back when I saw it. Now with that dinner, Katie also had a stick of garlic bread and a lot of mayonnaise. This was a fresh tub of mayonnaise almost. Wow, She's okay. had most of that. That's a lot of mayonnaise she's had. Donuts, desserts, mayo. I don't think I eat that bad. I don't think that what I've eaten, say, in the last seven days warrants so much weight. I don't know how to explain what's going on here other than it must be denial. But before we finish Katie's story, let's take a quick look at Michael because they both eat their main meal of the day together and it's the only meal they both claim to eat. Michael is a 24 year old security guard at the train station and claims to be eating only 1300 calories per day. And when they track him at work, they find that Michael is surprisingly eating exactly what he says he's eating in his food diaries. He grabs a snack from the shop at the train station, a sandwich, a bag of crisps and a soda, and that's it, just as he said he did. 
So where is he going wrong? The real issue is when he gets home from work. At dinner, the hidden cameras catch Michael and Katie eating huge portions of high calorie food. One night, it's a huge plate of roasted lamb, and another, it's a big plate of lasagna, and Michael even goes back for seconds. In Michael's case, his job requires him to walk around all day, and he's like 6'3 or something, so he's probably pretty hungry by the time he gets home from work. He didn't eat enough all day, and then he's ravenous when he gets to dinner, and then eats massive portion sizes to the point of weight gain. I think this is a really, really big issue for people. You're eating huge portions, Michael, and a number of those meals are coming to over one and a half thousand calories. That's a lot. That is a lot. I think this is super common. If you don't eat enough during the day, sometimes you'll get so hungry that you can really, really end up overeating in the evening. I used to do this exact same thing. All day at school or work, I would eat very little. And then I'd get home and be extremely hungry, which would result in me clearing out the cupboards. And there's actually been a lot of studies suggesting that for the average person, unless you're doing some sort of fasting protocol, not eating regular meals throughout the day can actually undermine your appetite control, making it more likely that you overeat at dinner time like Michael. So maybe that's why he's eating such large portions in the evening. But obviously research or not, everyone's different. Just because something is true in a study doesn't mean it will be true for you, but it's something to keep in mind if you are eating most of your calories at dinner time. And this is again where the concept of awareness is going to come into play majorly. Because if you start paying attention and being more aware of your behavior, again, not just food behavior, any behavior you might like to change, you'll start to notice little cause and effect relationships that can help you make big changes. In Michael's case, by being more aware of his behavior, he might learn that, yeah, he's actually super hungry by the time he gets home from work. And that is causing him to overeat on huge portions in the evening. Or maybe instead he notices that he's not ravenous, but he just enjoys having very large portions of food at dinner time. Armed with more awareness of his behavior, he can use what he learned in order to change his behavior in a way that's very sustainable for him, rather than just trying to force himself into a change that doesn't necessarily solve the problem of why he's overeating in the first place. And if you just pay attention, you might be able to find an easy solution that will almost effortlessly change your behavior. It's all about experimenting and finding what works for you. Changing any behavior is really about figuring figuring yourself out so you can learn to guide your behavior in the direction that you want it to go. Another thing both Katie and Michael are unaware of is the major impact of one-off behaviors that have a big impact on everything else. Like in Michael's case, he's chugging a ton of juice. You've said, I'm going sugar-free in my diet, or are you? resulting in Michael consuming a ton of extra calories and juice while actually simultaneously thinking that he's cut sugar out of his diet completely. He actually just had no idea that juice had sugar and was high in calories if you consume enough of it. Because at the time you just drink it and you're not thinking about it, you think, oh, it's fruit, it's fine. And Katie has a similar behavior, a one-off behavior that could massively change the trajectory of her weight gain if she was aware of it. That behavior for Katie is her thing for mayonnaise. Yeah, it turns out that Katie has been eating a lot of mayonnaise. We've already seen her going out for lunch, and on one of those days, she was caught eating 700 calories of mayonnaise at the salad bar. First, I was like, okay, they're obviously exaggerating this. There's no way somebody went and ate 700 calories of mayonnaise. But then she goes over to her brother's house and her brother actually comes on the show with evidence. This was a fresh tub of mayonnaise almost. Wow. She's okay. had most of that. That's a lot of mayonnaise she's had. So she ate half a tub of mayonnaise. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone eating a lot of mayonnaise like that before, except someone you might recall named Dawn. Do you recognize I that do. salad there? Yeah. Dawn was a contestant on Secret Eaters who was also accused of eating half a jar of mayo in one evening. And in Dawn's case, I don't think it was real. I think it was a setup to make it more dramatic for the show and I was team Dawn. Hashtag justice for Dawn, innocent until proven guilty. Because there was no real evidence that Dawn actually ate half a jar of mayo and the vibe was very off. I've got the jar. That's a thousand calories. Yeah. But I didn't have half, well, a quarter of a jar, which is what you're saying I have had. We're just yeah. trying to show you what you are eating. But in Katie's case, she seriously ate half a jar of mayo. They caught her twice on camera and she was just like, yo, yeah, I did eat that. That was yummy. <laughs> there were two separate mayo incidents of her walloping four to five tablespoons of mayo onto her food. Whole stick of garlic okay. bread with mayonnaise on the side. Also mayo and garlic bread, 
Is that another British thing or? Mindlessly eating mayo is definitely one of the worst things you could probably do calorie wise. I mean, the first ingredient is oil. Real mayo is basically just oil and eggs. So it's not like it's necessarily bad, especially if you made it yourself, but it is definitely high in calorie. In the end, Lynn Garden reveals the truth about how much Katie and Michael were eating. Michael, 2,900 calories. Katie, 2,800 calories a day. And five weeks later, it's looking like a few changes were able to make a big difference in their diets. So we have cut quite a lot of stuff out and we don't even notice that it's missing. There's no more juice in the house. We are not allowed juice in the house. <laughs> Katie and Michael are just such good examples of how improving your awareness of your behavior can drastically shift the needle in the direction that you want it to go. Awareness is a key behavior change principle for anything that you want to change, but it's particularly important for eating behavior. But all it really takes is paying more attention to whatever behavior you want to change. I think my consciousness is going to be so much more aware of what I'm eating. Seeking out information about what you're doing and seeking out information about what you could be doing. The one thing that really helped me, made me more aware and helped me change my eating behavior was learning about ultra processed foods, which if you haven't seen it, you can see my video on that here, or you can check out my other secret eaters videos here. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.